morning, everyone. Thank you for being with us this morning. We have three cases that we're going to talk to you about. The first one is of particular interest to me, and I think it should be to all of you as well. We know that whenever people have had too much to drink, we tell them, call a taxi or call Uber. Don't drink and drive. Well, this all started at a bar or a lounge on Highway 27 in Dundee, where a young lady obviously had way too much to drink. And her car was in the parking lot, and a patron and the bartender together said, hey, we gotta get this lady home. She's in no condition to drive, so they called Uber. Uber arrives. The patron, the female patron in the bar, who we now know's name is uh, Jessica, helps escort the lady we now know as Jasmine and put her into the Uber. The Uber driver leaves, and he is on his way taking her home in the vicinity of Winter Haven, Florida. You can see a conversation that occurs here during this period of time, and the conversation is between Jessica, who is at the bar, and her boyfriend, and you can tell they have a very rocky relationship here, and the boyfriend is explosive. He's stalking his girlfriend, he's angry with her, and he tells her, quote unquote, I'm gonna F up the Uber driver. Now let's go back to the Uber driver. The Uber driver knowing nothing about what's going on because this conversation is between a guy we now know to be Jason Boak and his girlfriend who's still at the bar. So it's a little confusing, but it's really simple. Jason thinks his girlfriend got into the Uber. He doesn't realize that Jason's girlfriend, Jessica, helped put Jasmine in the Uber. Now let me get, give you some more background. Neither Jasmine or Jessica or the Uber driver know each other. This is just traditional, I've had too much to drink, Uber driver wheels up, Jessica puts Jasmine in the Uber, Uber takes off toward Winter Haven. Goofball here, thinking his girlfriend is in the Uber, and you can see he texts, it's nice of him to text his intent, talks about what all he's gonna do to the Uber driver. Uber driver obviously has no idea until a Ford F or Ford F-250 pickup truck pulls right up on his bumper with bright lights. The Uber driver says, hmm, I wonder who this guy is. The tailgates him a minute, then he pulls out beside him rides beside him a couple of seconds on 542 or the Dundee Road between Dundee and Winter Haven, and then starts to pass him and forces him to a stop in the roadway. When he does that, Jason jumps out of his F-250 pickup truck and says, you know I got a pistol, you want me to shoot you? That was a terrible mistake on Jason's part because the Uber driver not only happens to be a licensed to carry a firearm, concealed firearm in the state of Florida, but he just finished the police academy. So he understands the law. You will see the video in just a second. So when Jason jumps out of his truck after forcing him off of the road is rapidly approaching him and saying, I got a, you know, what was it? You know, I've got a pistol. You want me to shoot you? He's holding a cell phone in his right hand 
coming up from his waist. When he does that, our shooter, Robert, who is an Uber driver, shoots him one time in the chest. And down he goes. Then Robert immediately, the Uber driver, calls 911. He gives, he talks in police lingo, by the way. Hey, we need EMS, we need fire. I've shot one time. He threatened me. I'm, he, he tries to contain the bleeding. Then he starts doing CPR. And you can hear as he gives a rendition about the suspect, Jason, breathing his last breath. Jasmine, who's in the back seat, so drunk she don't know, sick him from come here. She hears all this after the fact, and we're in the process of downloading some video after the shooting's over where apparently she staggered out of the vehicle. But Jasmine doesn't know anything. She doesn't know the guy driving. She doesn't has no relationship with Jessica, who was just trying to be a good Samaritan. And at the end of the day, the message is clear. Don't mess with the Uber driver. Leave the Uber driver alone, because he just may be a certified police officer in waiting. And when you force him off of the road and threaten to shoot him with a gun while holding a cell phone in your right hand, which is a shiny object in a second, you could get shot and killed. This is a justifiable homicide all day long. You have the right to protect yourself. This is a classic stand your ground case. A classic, and this was the intent of the law. Let me paraphrase. Uber driver's just doing his job. He has no clue in the world what's happening until a truck forces him off of the road. The guy jumps out and in seconds is on him saying, I got a pistol. You want me to shoot you? And he defends himself. Here's a message for the hotheads of the community. Don't do that stuff. Good people carry guns and they will shoot you. A lot. Graveyard dead. Leave people alone. It's a new day in the state of Florida and in the United States. You may be used to bullying people and being bigger and stronger and beating people up and slamming their heads into the pavement and pulling knives on them. I highly recommend that, uh, against that, I highly recommend against that if you value your life. Because Jason here thought he'd get out, get out and throw a little threat on the Uber driver. And I appreciate Jason giving us his criminal intent in advance in writing. It helps create a perfect stand your ground for the Uber driver, Robert Westlake. Any questions on this one? Did he actually have a pistol on his person or in the car or at home? We have not found a pistol in the car, but when he got out making those threats, and you'll see, let's, let's look at the video. You'll get a clear, you'll see if after, you have to look at it over and over, but understand the Uber driver is having to react real time, but you'll see how fast it happened and the fact that he had something in his right hand that Robert, the Uber driver, said after the fact is I kicked it, thinking I'm kicking a gun out of the way, then I see it's a cell phone. That's how fast it happens. That's how quick you've got to decide whether you want to live or die as the victim. And that's how fast these victims have to make those decisions. Can you back that up, Matt, so you can see once again how quick it is?
Ladies and gentlemen, it goes without saying the Uber driver had a camera in his car. But you see how rapidly you have to make a decision of whether you live or whether you die. And I can tell you unequivocally, the Uber driver, Robert, did exactly the right thing to protect himself and ostensibly his passenger as well. Any other questions? We'll certainly make that available for you all. How do you pronounce Jason's last name? Jason, I don't know. Do Boak, B-O-E-K. That's Polk County pronunciation. All right. So that, that's, that is subject to modification by someone who may have a different interpretation being the family, but we call him Boak. Johnson Boak broke the law, and he stands no more. It was not a good decision on his part. Oh, he was a barber at one time, and this picture is flattering compared to how bad he looked that night rolling out of that truck. Leave people alone. They may have a gun and shoot you. 